Hello and welcome back to the Shiki Science Show. Have you ever wondered, how is food intake regulated? Why am I always hungry? So in my last video, I spoke to you about the role of genetics in weight gain, and I introduced you to the concepts and use of genome-wide association studies. And I showed you this nature paper here that looked at genome-wide association study for body mass index and genetic variants. Now studies like this, in combination with other monogenic cases of obesity, have highlighted the key players in the regulation of food intake. One of these, which I mentioned last time, is leptin, the hormone secreted from adipose tissue. Through binding to its receptor in the brain, it stimulates energy expenditure and reduces the desire for further food intake. But what is this mysterious signalling process? This is what I will discuss in this video. So many different genes were identified from the genome-wide association study that I've listed here. FTO is the most significant out of these, but here I will discuss POMC and MC4R because they are involved in the regulation of food intake. So let's start with POMC. So POMC stands for pro-OPA melanocortin and it is upregulated in response to leptin. So how does this happen? So when you've just eaten, um, leptin is going to be secreted by adipose tissue and so it goes up to the brain as I've explained before and it binds to its receptors and this upregulates the expression of POMC in POMC neurons, hence the name. <laughs> um, so what happens is you increase the expression of POMC and this, these POMC neurons are in the hypothalamus which is a region of the brain. In, you know, to be more specific it's in the arcuate nucleus of the hypothalamus and so when you have leptin you increase POMC expression and then downstream of that, you are going to prevent food intake and promote energy expenditure. But how does POMC achieve this? So POMC is a protein that gets chopped up and it gets chopped up into different smaller peptides and they have different functions. The key peptide that I'm going to talk about here is alpha MSH, which stands for alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone. So alpha MSH binds to its own receptor, and that receptor is MC4R, which is another one of the loci associated genes. So MC4R stands for melanocortin 4 receptor. And so MC4R is part of a really large family of protein receptors called G-protein coupled receptors, or GPCRs for short. And what is really unique about these G-protein coupled receptors is that they have seven transmembrane domains as you can see in this little sketch here. Well, it looks a bit better in my second sketch. So the key thing is that these are receptors that are at the membrane. So the alpha MSH can come and interact with the receptor and that interaction activates the downstream signaling of this receptor. And so what is the response of that downstream signaling? Yep, you're right. It's the prevention of food intake and promotion of energy expenditure. So let's summarise what we've covered so far. So we learned about leptin and how it interacts with its receptor and how that occurs in the hypothalamus of the brain. From there, it activates or upregulates the expression of POMC in the POMC neurons. POMC can then get broken down, well, chopped up, to different peptides, one of which is alpha melanocyte stimulating hormone that binds to the MC4R receptor and this has the effect of stimulating energy expenditure and preventing food intake. But the situation is a little bit more complicated than I've told you so far. So leptin receptors are not just found on the POMC neurons. There are another class of neurons called agouti related protein neurons, as you can see AGRP here. And this has the effect of preventing the expression of the agouti related protein and so this protein does is the antagonist of POMC and prevents um, activation of MC4R. So when you've got leptin you reduce the expression of the agouti related protein and hence you get rid of that negative repression. In addition to leptin you also have another um, hormone called ghrelin which is kind of like the opposite to leptin and glucagon like peptide 1 is another hormone um, that kind of works similarly to leptin. 
But the key thing is, the situation is just way more complicated than I've elucidated here so far. So firstly, in terms of actually understanding the biochemistry behind this regulation system, most of the studies have been done in mice, not humans. So how do we know if this is translatable to our own system? Secondly, I've drawn this pathway out as a linear pathway, but actually the situation is probably better resembled as like a spider web of interactions. Thirdly, the hypothalamus is not the only area of the brain that is directly related to regulating food intake. There are other areas of the brain that are important too. And related to this, there are other neurons that have the leptin receptor. And lastly, whilst we know that the brain is a highly dynamic organ, we are still pretty uncertain about the role of these different genes and the protein products in development of the brain and how that can affect adult life. So if you were interested in finding out more about this topic, I highly recommend reading this review article that goes into more detail about the different components of this regulatory system of food intake. And just to highlight a more recent example, this paper looked at genetic variants in the MC4R receptor protein that I talked about and how different variants have been found that either have an increased function or a decreased function and that can impact the body mass index. So I hope from this video that you now have a much better understanding of how food intake is regulated.